Today we're going to look at the feasibility of using a car alternator for late duty welding. And if you have a 100 amp or better car alternator, there shouldn't be any problem. The key issue though is with the field regulation. My first demonstration is with a Lisa Neville alternator. I believe it's rated at 70 amps. And my best results I got was with nine volts on the field. The engine that I'm using here is a 11 horsepower Briggs and Stratton engine. Pulley ratio is pretty close to one to one. And I'm not running the engine very fast. So one of the issues to make this work effectively with some control of your arc would be a fine adjust for the throttle. I got a uh, 1024 screw and I set that up on my throttle linkage and that gives you um, some control on the voltage. So these are the uh, field leads, then I have the three phase output, and that goes to a three phase rectifier assembly that I had used on previous projects. Here's our volt and amp meters, and we'll watch the work in progress. Separate fields of five. Please be tolerant, I'm not a professional welder, but that was the beat I did with the field test and the, uh, the run with the uh, volt and amp meters. I was on top of a couple trial runs just to get my field settings and all that. But that's that, it's uh, entirely possible, um, but the thing is you have to uh, control the field. I wish I had some kind of a voltage regulator on the field and then it would be real easy but that's it for now. Next I will try a large Kreischel alternator. So on this next experiment we're going to use a large Chrysler alternator. I think it's rated at about 100 amps. And it's got the dual V-belt drive on it. And by the way, I'm using a 332nd diameter welding rod on all of these tests.
these are the welds I just put down with the uh, Chrysler alternator. And you can noticeably see that the Chrysler alternator is not as efficient as the Lease Neville. It takes a lot more power on the field and it loads down the engine a lot more. I had to bring up the RPM on the engine to uh, compensate. So our next test run is going to be using an old Delco Remy alternator. I don't know what it's from. could be a municipal vehicle or a truck of some kind. It's an old unit. I find these things at swap meets. I get them pretty cheap. And one thing about trying to weld with a car alternator, you're going to need a big one because it's going to take a lot of iron and copper to develop the magnetic and electromagnetic energy to do what you want to do. I mean, a little, a little alternator just does not have enough in it. You've got to get a big one. So here's a sample of the welds I just done with the Delco Remy. It really didn't do a half bad of a job. Um, it pretty much takes everything out of the engine though. It takes a lot to pull these car alternators. The old voltage was around 10 volts. It's possible to weld with the car alternator, but you better get a big one and some kind of field control um, might be nice.